chat. So, Glenn, first off, we know Edward Snowden is in hiding, believed still to be in Hong Kong under, under considerable scrutiny. Why did he want to, to go public today in this online discussion? I think usually what happens with whistleblowers is they end up being um, not part of the debate, either because they are in hiding or because they are indisposed in prison. A lot has been said about him. Lots of accusations have been made toward him, and I think that he feels as though he wants to account for his own behavior and speak directly to the public and answer questions about what he did and why he did it. He was asked today if anything should happen to him, do others have access to his documents? And he answered, and I want to read to our viewers what he said. He said, all I can say right now is the U.S. government is not going to be able to cover this up by jailing or murdering me. Truth is coming, and it cannot be stopped. First of all, d does he really believe that his life is in danger, that the U.S. may want to murder him? Just go and read the, what the U.S. officials are telling media outlets, like the New York Times from 48 hours ago. What they're saying is that if the information that he has in his possession, and in, including the information in his head, ends up in the hands of any other foreign government, it would be the gravest threat to national security in a very long time. So I don't think that it's necessarily probable or likely or anything like that that the U.S. government is going to try and use physical force to prevent that from happening. But if you're him and you hear U.S. officials saying that you, they think you pose the greatest threat to the U.S. national security in a long time because of what you have and what you know, it's certainly sensible to think about those risks, to take precautions. If you look at what the U.S. government has done in the last 12 years in the name of national security, there's a lot of extreme behavior that they've engaged in. So I think anybody in that position would be thinking that way. Do, do you buy that when you officials say this is the gravest risk? I mean, do you, do you buy that? No, I think U.S. officials always say that about any, any time that they are having light shined on what they've been doing in secret. It's the way that they try and keep that wall of secrecy erected. At the same time, it is true that the National Security Agency is a critically important part of what the U.S. national security state has built up over many years. And if huge amounts of secrets were to simply be turned over in mass to another government, it is true that that would be damaging. But he's been very clear that that's not his intention. If that were his intention, he could have done that in lots of different ways. Um, and so I think what this really is is a fear-mongering campaign on the part of the U.S. government to turn Americans and the public against him and, and therefore turn away from the disclosures that have been making as a result of what he's done. He says that he has not given information about any U.S. Uh, operations against what he's called legitimate military targets. But, but, I mean, his critics would say, well, who is this guy to determine what is and is not a legitimate military target? What he's saying is that there are certain countries in which the U.S. Congress has declared uh, a war, essentially, the authorized use of military force in places like Afghanistan, um, and that he isn't interested in exposing secrets of what, what is being done against those countries. He instead is wanting to inform the citizenry, not just in the United States but around the world, that the NSA is targeting everybody and trying to erode privacy for all of us. It's, the heads of the intelligence committees have now asked to declassify information that they say proves dozens of terror plots have been foiled because of these programs. If that happens, would it justify in your mind the existence of PRISM and other similar programs that might exist? No, and this is such an important point. Let's say the U.S. government collects everybody's phone records and taps into everybody's Internet chats. They then say, when it turns out that they get caught doing that, well, look, we detected terrorist plots as a result of this program. No, that isn't correct. They ended up detecting terrorist plots because they specifically listened in on the phone conversations or email communications of specific people about whom there was evidence to believe they were actually engaged in terrorism. So what the U.S. government always did in the past when they battled the Soviets, when they engaged in the Cold War, was it was very targeted surveillance. It was only against people for whom there was really evidence to believe they were engaged in wrongdoing. Indiscriminate, massive surveillance actually makes it harder to find the bad people because they have so much information they can't even process it. But the fact that they end up finding somebody bad through mass surveillance doesn't prove that they wouldn't have found those same people through more targeted surveillance programs. All right. uh, Glenn Greenwald, Glenn, I appreciate it. Thanks, Anderson.